two, three. David Kearns Hoadley. Ari and Pike. Chuck Doswell. Tom Brazil. John McGinley. Robin Tanamachi. Kelly Bluestein. John Weaver. Jerry Verkaik. Gene Moore. Don Burgess. Peggy Willinger. Carson Eads. Beavis. Roberts. Alan Prentice. Jack Corso. Is this on? Keith Brown, Randall Simpson, Kenny Adams, Scott McPartland, David Lewison, Betsy Abrams, Vince Miller, David Demko, Gregory S. Forbes, Scott Woolham, Reed Tiller, Heidi Farrar, Rocky Raskovic, Jay Angel, Scott Liverpool, Daniel Dawson, Bob Hartig, Kevin Barton, Darren Brunin, Ken Cole, Jennifer Marshall, Tony Wallbeck, Matt Crowther, Lauren Shane, Roger Edwards, Matthew Biddle, Joshua Warman, Michael Locke, Jean Roden, Karen Kaseba, Rich Thompson, Stephanie Lewison, Greg Stumpf, Douglas S. Keesley, Donna Evans, <laughs> Roger Hill, <laughs> David Fogel, <laughs> <Fogel, laughs> <Fogel, laughs> Joseph Golden, Karen Hill, Tim Marshall, <laughs> Hi, Mom! <laughs> Roy Britt, Scott Blair, Sydney Martin, Dr. Lewis Wicker, Cecilia, Morgan, Zed Grubb, Palka, Lewison, Zipsa, Bob Gonzinius, Chris Kreidler, Ben Wilhelm, Melissa Marceloni, Skip Talbot, Mike Tice, Sol Allen. Can you pause it? Okay, so those are so far the participants with this project. A lot of them, and uh, many, many stories to put together. So, let me see. Now, I want to take you back to the first uh, publicly known storm chasing special that was aired uh, in 1978 before storm chasing was really getting in the public eye. This is the first time that any of this really got out there. And I uh, had a chance to interview one of the participants, uh, well two actually, um, one of which is included in here, John Weaver, who lives not too far from here, about his uh, experiences with the production crew. It didn't sound too much different from other production crews and modern stuff, but uh, I'll let you go ahead and play the film. The last cool air of winter collides with the warm, moist air of spring, high above the central United States. We didn't seek out the publicity. Yeah. It seemed to kind of come to us, and we weren't at least I wasn't in the beginning comfortable with it. There's a very high probability of tornado formation in any storms which fire. I don't know what impression other people had of it, but uh, hey, I never met, uh, I never, I, mean, I never met anyone. The tornado is the fiercest of all storms. Unlike the hurricane, it can unleash its fury with virtually no warning. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. I, there was a production crew, and uh, I remember being struck with the uh, with the efforts of the production crew to make to make a past episode, which had just recently happened, uh, which was the Edmond uh, Oklahoma tornado, look real. And I remember shooting the same scene. I had told them in an offhand way about how. Uh, I had been analyzing and analyzing and figuring out that this one storm was headed toward northwestern Oklahoma City, which is a nightmare for chasing. And uh, I was vectoring crews in there very carefully, and I was saying, I wonder if it's producing yet. I'm not getting any reports. Do we have an ASRAN on the northwest circulation, please? I think uh, maybe it was Brad Small, who's now at the University of Washington. Okay, Jen, what do you see? I was sitting at my desk, and the room was very small, and they wanted Brad to come in and move into the shot. And of course, I had never shot TV before then. Go ahead, what do you want? Brad had to come in and fall down to a knee outside of shot, and then just kind of move toward my desk in a kneeling position. Uh, I just fed up on the observation deck, and there's a big new set of towers building in the southwest side of that El Reno. Okay, thank you, thank you, Brad. And I got so punchy at one point that he came up close to me and said, John, John, and I went, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, come on now, guys, you're wasting film. We're going long on this, you know. And so we did it about three, three more times, and we were very happy. But they, but they have Bob Davies Jones. He was British. He'd get a cup of tea before we left, and he'd saunter out to the vehicle and get into it. <laughs> Okay, John, we're just turning on the I-35 just outside the lab. But they wanted to make it look dynamic and energetic and emergency-like. <laughs> they
It made him run. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Intercept chase heads out to find the storm system and document the tornado's formation. And I can understand it because they have to have they have to have a good flow if it's going to be adventurous and interesting and whatnot. My uncle Walter comes home from the city and he's like, I found something at a newsstand. And it was uh, the April 86 issue of Weatherwise magazine. It was called The Passion and Patience of Tornado Chasing. And I remember looking through it and I was like, oh my God. I was like, people actually chase storms. I used to run down to the lake and watch thunderstorms rolling off Lake Michigan. I first became interested in storm chasing because of the movie Twister. It was warm in me. I grew up with it. I used to always uh, look out the window when there was a storm in uh, my childhood years. It came up um, on the first day and he, he told me about it. He was very excited. Oh my God. Oh my God. After my first chase in 92 out there, I was like, I gotta find out more about this. So the only thing I knew about was Nova Tornado. New cells are forming right along here. And that Howie Bluestein seemed like a really nice guy. So that's the only guy I knew other, other than Lou Wicker, you know, who was on there. And, but Howie just seemed more accessible because he was a professor at, at OU. So I uh, wrote to him and he was nice enough to write back and told me about Tim Marshall and Storm Trek. It was just sheer excitement, you know. I said I was going to see a tornado. And I didn't even remember. They said they dropped a sound pod in the path. Dallas tornado in 1957. And it came on the radio that they were having that uh, tornado. I remember being very scared by lightning and thunder growing up. And uh, I had to hide, hide my face during thunderstorms. Once I was able to do that and uh, look at lightning, where, uh, to the point where I wasn't afraid of it anymore, that's when I started to become obsessed with it. Back then, of course, I just uh, you know, didn't know anything about what the clouds or anything. I just kind of drove around aimlessly. <laughs> I think I, I learned about storm chasing from Tim Marshall first, to see his, his videos, and I believe that's when I first heard about storm chasing. And I wrote letters to the Weather Channel and professors at Penn State and also Tim Marshall. And I used to ask about how I'd mount a Doppler radar on my car. Twister introduced me and I walked out of the theater and said, I'm going to do that someday. My mom tells me that I was four years old getting the maps out and um, doing the watch boxes. <laughs> Here we go, the attack! I do remember by the time I was seven I was doing uh, surface analysis. Gene couldn't, couldn't restart his car, and we're thinking, well, this could be a problem. It's kind of heading northeastward towards us. Get the starting fluid. Come on. Her uh, rolling down the window and saying, uh, hey guys, you might want to think about moving. A tornado hit Worcester in 1953 in June, and I think I'm right about five years old. And my mother told me to come in the house. Tornadoes suck little boys up and, and uh, <laughs> throw them away somewhere. Is it coming this way? Turn it around! I met Jim Leonard while delivering pizza at Domino's. And we just hit it off there. I overheard him telling a story to the manager about his car being destroyed. And I just had to know more. I said, you purposely went into this storm to have your car destroyed? No, I make it quick. I got all I need, right? This is live video. A friend of mine and I were going to do some photography that day and the sirens went off. I was completely unaware that there was any type of severe weather threat. And I turned to my friend and said, Holly, let's go chase it. It was just fascinating to me. And my parents would wake me up at night and say, we've got to go down to the basement. Do you have an interest in weather at that time? No. Do you have an interest in one of these storms? None. It's his fault. <laughs> I think that's, that's true. I married into this madness. Oh my goodness, look at that! Very they were actually, uh, they were a little concerned that I might get myself into trouble, but uh, they were supportive. And uh, I kept in touch with them by telephone, and I would let them know where I was, what I was seeing. I just got hit by a hailstone. You did? Yeah, over here at this window. Oh, the window. I thought you did. I thought mine seemed to stink. We got in the car. I didn't get hit by a hailstone. I vaguely remember he got 
got hit, and I know I started ragging on him about something. You got hit, and it's like, you know, what the hell's wrong with you? Or I know you said you got hit, and I thought that's kind of curious. <laughs> the car is me, and I'm the car. There's a stitch in the bottom. That was not down the road. I remember the wolves from that day. And of course, Rich had a couple, too. Well, you're driving fast and bouncy. Well, what am I going to do? Stop? No. <laughs> Intercept. Yes, thank, thank you for saying that. Because nobody else will remember that Chuck Robertson and Jim Leonard are out looking at that same thing. There's a tape of them saying, that looks like a tornado. That looks like a tornado. Hey, 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 we're going to get a tornado back here. Tornado. Oh, man. Get it, get it. You see it? Yeah. Let's get out of this It's a high risk day, which was a high risk bus day, I think. And we're all fired up, and it's been a very bad year. And so we're looking forward to maybe having a big day. And it was close to central Oklahoma, which made it easy. And, um, and then a lightning strike uh, hit an oil well, and the mezzo wall cloud goes right over the top of the ground. That's it. That's it. But there is smoke coming out of it. It looks like this militated, you know, stranded thing. And so you even hear me say, I don't know what that is, but I call start calling it a tornado. Tornado, tornado, I think we have a tornado. You know, because it was there for a long time in the view. You know, it wasn't like it, you know, so people forget that Jim Leonard and Chuck Robinson are about 10 or 15 miles north of me and saying the exact same thing. Wow, that's a fire! That's what we'll let me That's just a good joke. Well, it was in the Nova special, right? I mean, you know, yeah, so I mean, that was, that was right in the car, and it's great. You know, it's like me and arguing with Lance in the clear, which way we're looking on the road, the banjo music playing. I mean, they know how to do it, right? It's, it's good editing, so. It was good chase theater, you know? <laughs> You know the mess he's in, you know, no really steady job. Yeah, he said I, I inspired him to do all that. So I'm the, basically to blame for what he's doing. So. So that's uh, barely scratching the surface. Uh, and Brazilis did like to rag me a lot about that. He's kind of true on that respect. But um, yeah, I, uh, the, the project continues basically on uh, in kind and financial donations. There's a link to the page uh, right there. If you go to stormchasinghistory.net, you can, uh, if you so choose, uh, donate to this project. I'm also opening this up uh, here uh, for advanced copies, too, as well. I do plan to have a premiere version done by this fall, a condensed 60-minute version that I hope to air uh, somewhere in Norman, Oklahoma. And uh, later on, though, this six-part anthology, that's going to take uh, probably considerably longer unless I get some help. So uh, just remain aware that that's uh, a work in progress. But I. This is uh, what I'm doing. There's some information right there. And just to go back to my college uh, era, um, this was a quote that was on a geography syllabus. And uh, it's by Daniel Burnham. Make no small plans. They have no magic to stir humanity's blood and probably themselves will not be realized. Make big plans. Aim high and hope and work. Remember that a noble logical plan, once recorded, will never die. But long after we're gone, will be a living thing and always asserting itself with ever-growing assistance and insistency. Remember that our sons and daughters are going to do things that will stagger us. Let your watchword be your order and your beacon beauty. Think big. 
And that's what I'm doing with this project. I'm just thinking big and wanting to present this huge, vast history to everyone and the general public. So special thanks to everyone who has uh, donated uh, footage, time, effort, and energy. Some of you are here, some of you are not, but uh, there's so many out there that have made this become what it is. And I'm grateful for that as well. Uh, there's my contact information. Thank you for your time, and uh, yeah, keep in touch.